It's a slight misalignment. Ow! <laughs> it's in a little far. It's in like seven miles too far. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs>
What a, what a stupid maneuver. All right, stay right there. All right, perfect. So that comes right off. Nice. In the immortal words of Paul Rubens, I meant to do that. That's going to stay right there. It's hanging on the, uh, I've got a nut on the back side of the core support holder downer bolt. That's good. It's so interesting to pull these cars apart. The other side, you can see the shim stack there. I've got them taped because that's where the original driver's side fender sat. And this side, I think there's one. Four on that side, one on this side. And that's not because of the clobbering it took on the collision damage. It's because these cars are so inconsistent during the assembly process. And if it sounds like I'm beaten up on old Camaros, I'm not. It's just a reality, man. Just part of the whole dang thing. All right, I got two on the bottom. I gotta get my light. And I'm not even gonna get a creeper, cause you know, I'm just a rebel that way, and I think they're 916s also. If it's going to go south, it's going to be on these two here. Hey, Kevin. Why don't you get the impact gun? Just zap that bolt right out of there. Well, because sometimes there's spring steel clips on the inside and the shock load of the impact gun can break those clips and you can find yourself having to cut fasteners off. So I've always found when disassembling older cars, it's better to go ow with hand tools first and just make sure everything walks out like it's supposed to walk out. And I also understand that when I talk to you like this, the mic doesn't pick it up. And then when I talk to you like this, the mic is super loud. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. All right. So there's a, there's a piece of it. That's what I'm talking about. Get a super close up of that. That's the clip on the back side that is shattered despite my best efforts. And now I'm gonna have to get in there with a vice grip, lock it in place, and remove it. All right, so I've vice gripped onto the back side of that clip, the busted stuff, and we're just gonna try. See if it'll come out. I think it'll come out. Hopefully. No. No, it didn't.
there. Why does that matter? I'll tell you why that matters. Look at this fastener. Look at the thickness of the washer. It, it's a washer that is integrated into the bolt. It won't come off of that shoulder. It's a 916, it's a domed head, and it's, it's, I think, a 20 thread pitch. So this is specific to that lower fender. I want this to go back in there. I don't want to reach for the generic fasteners in my generic fastener pile. I want this one to go back where it belongs. This one, it's kiboshed, it's messed up. But you see, those are for the bottom of this fender. That's why this matters. That's why I didn't just cut the head off of it, even though, boy, I wanted to. Anyway, that's, that's the dealio there. If I'm doing a restoration, these got to go back where I found them. And even if I'm doing a resto mod, it helps to have everything go back in the right place. It's, it's, it's what's supposed to go there. That's why. If I've played my cards right, I've got three fasteners, and I can take the inner and outer fender off all at one shot. And... I'm past the point of carrying, so I'm going to use the mini impact. Same drill. I'm going to keep those fasteners in a bag, label them. Set that on the floor. <laughs> See? Yeah? Yeah? Once in a while, the blind squirrel. Oh, look here. Uh, um, to my point, one, two, three shims. And they came from this back bolt here. So I'm going to stack these guys up. I'm actually going to write myself a note that these body shims come from the bottom on the rear bolt. Bottom fitter. The last one, I think, and we're gonna go like, oh no, <laughs> it's the second to last one. I left two safeties up there. Well, last thing I wanted was that thing, this whole thing to come cascading down on my head because GM sheet metal is high quality and heavy. So, what I'll do. So I'll just set my fasteners down there on the floor, keep them in an organized manner. And this guy can go over here. Till I need you again. I'm just gonna prelude these hinge bolts and work them in. It just always helps to Make sure everything is nice and free turning. So what really sucks is to cross-thread something like this when you're in the middle of trying to adjust and bobbing and weaving and thinking and all that kind of stuff. All right. Not going to worry about that surface rust. We are, however, going to worry about these hinges. Now, I'm just going to kind of guess at where they go. I'm guessing at where they go based off of these rust slash witness marks. We can kind of have a clue. Like right there, you could see that. That's where I'm gonna go right there. If I do, that's too far. That's too far. We're just gonna do, give it a little bit of rust shoulder there. So I'll use this one. There's a close idea, sort of.
That's fully open. That's fully open. I think that's a little low. We're going to come up. And that's way too high. And we're going to try that right there. Where are we at? There we are. It's like Goldilocks and the three bears, which is just right. All right. Got them all started, finger tight. I've got zero starting point with these. I have no idea where they're gonna be. But I also know with the door closed, I can get to all of them from the outside. So that's my first thing. We'll get close. All right, close enough. And we're going to try and close the door. Those are lower fender. Note, thing, tools, back in box, floor closet. Okay. Thank you, door dolly. It's horrible. Didn't expect it to be good. What I'm gonna do now is hang it on the pin, hang it on the striker, and now we can start adjusting. We got a long way to go. It's in there, it's out of the bottom, and all of the adjustment is at the front. So, yeah. So I always start with the rocker panel first. When we're looking at a rocker, despite the rust, the gap is fairly even until it gets back here and it's kicked out. But the distance between the door and the rocker panel is pretty consistent. So that, what that means is that I'm going to kind of lock in my lower hinge and I'll use that as a pivot point. And I kind of lied, I can get to, I can get to them here with some creative ratchets and extensions. On the bottom, I'm gonna get an extension to lock in that on that lower hinge there. That back bottom corner's got to go in, and this top is misaligned here, so it's got to come out. So that's going to be my first adjustment right here. All right, so I think this should kind of be in a nice sort of an orientation from there to there. So I'm gonna lock that in. Okay. 
ish, which brought me in here, but not nearly enough outage at the top. Anyway, all right. I know I want the door to come up, so I'm going to put some pressure on it here. All right. Now you should see movement right there. probably moved. So I'm going to I'm going to buzz that in. We're going to see what that did. All right, at least it's hanging on the striker. I'm in the right direction. So, um still in here, but with it fully latched, it's closer at the bottom. Looking at my style line, if you look at that straight on, you can see that this peak is lower than the quarter panel. So we got to come up just a bit. So I'm gonna kind of rinse and repeat that last action. Get a little bit more movement out of it. All right, there's pressure. No, that came forward probably too much. We're gonna try it. Style line matches. Look at it from the top to the bottom. So <laughs> the modern Hyundai's and Honda Civics. They've got a super tight, about a 3 16 gap, and that's kind of what we set our standards to these days with our muscle cars, but they never had gaps like that. And that's, this right here is about your typical uh, mid-70s Camaro gap. Big. The important thing is, a little picky. We're getting close, all right. So here it's still out a little bit at the bottom and it's in at the top. So when I look over here, from all my surface rust, it's out just a taste right there. I can see it. Boy, it's hard to see. I might need to skin that door. But I'm gonna kick it in a little bit at the bottom. No, no I'm not. I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna adjust it out more at the top because this kind of relaxed a little bit. I want it hanging on the pin. I want it to kick out at, at the top here. So maybe I'll try the top and then I'll go to the bottom. All right. So I need something to wedge in there. All right, so this hinge is loose. When I pull it out, watch what happens in the back of the door. That's coming back into alignment. All right, so I'm gonna snug that down right there. Work. 
Okay. Boy, that helped that a lot right there. Helped it a lot. What does it do now when we do that? That's not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible. It's actually pretty okay right there. It's, well, it's out at the top and it's in there. Overall, when I look, yeah, you can see that style line is dipped down again, which is interesting because my gap's getting wider and my style line just got goofed up, even though it closes easier. Yeah, all right, it's a thing. So what I need to do is get the whole door back. I'm not, I'm not totally dissatisfied with the flatness of it all the way down, but it needs to come back some more. So the way I'm gonna do that is by walking the hinges back. So I'm gonna support the backside, and even though it doesn't need to come up that much, I'm gonna lo loosen the lower hinge, and I'm gonna walk it back up and tighten it, and we'll lower the door down, and then tighten the top hinge. And I'll do that a couple of times and it'll seesaw it back. It'll walk it back towards the quarter panel more because I want to tighten it up a little bit there. And then I can sneak up on it further. But as far as the, uh, the way the door sits in the hole, I think I'm okay with it. We just got to come back. All right. Hopefully the excessive pressure I'm putting on this crumbling door skin does not affect and collapse my door frame. That's loose. In theory, by me lifting this up, it's pivoting off the top hinge and bringing that hinge that way. So now when I let this pressure off, I know it's going to be goofy. It's going to be up too high at the top. Yeah, way too high at the top. So now what I'm going to do loosen the top hinge and just the 700 pounds of door, it'll be its own adjuster. Too many, too many Douglas on that. There, okay, that went about a sixteenth. You didn't see it, but I did. It just naturally dropped itself down. there. Okay, so that closed up my gap and it actually evened it up pretty dang good right through there. And the proof is in the sound of it closing. Listen, that's fully latched. Folks, I'm not a hundred percent sure that we're going to get a better gap than that right now. Now, they always splay open at the top, but from here all the way down, that's pretty stinking consistent. So, what I think, what I think I'm gonna do from here, I think I'm gonna lock it in. It closes nice, the gap's nice, that's my reference point. I might spoon the back side of that door out to meet the fender. 
I'm sorry. Reverse that and fast forward. I might spoon the edge of that door frame out to match the quarter panel. As far as the rest of it goes, I think we're in good shape. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna snug this guy up, all this business up in here. Now we're gonna say that's, that's alignment. At least for the passenger side. I know, chrome sockets. Ryan Shand is yelling at me right now. Remind me that I said we've got one more thing to do up here. All right, so now I'm coming back this way. All right, so it's flush here and it's flush there and it's low here. I can even see where they've sanded here and it's dipped down in there. So with it on the pin or the striker, I'm putting pressure on here with my spoon, just tapping. Just bringing that outer edge out. Better. All right, we are good to go right there, buddy. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the way this works, but something's bugging me here. And I want to show you what it is. What, hear that? It's, it's hanging. It's hitting metal before it hits the actual latch. Close is great. Here's what's happening. We closed up the gap. We moved everything back. And if you can see this new witness mark right there, you see that polished metal, super shiny? What's hitting that is the outside of the, the actual inner door shell. So that's because we've closed up the gap here. We brought everything back that away. So what I'm gonna try and do is to there's three super fat washers in there. This thing's spaced out. All we need to do is create a little more clearance um, and split the difference. Just get a little bit less of a gap there. So I'm gonna try and take one more washer out of there and see, and see if I can just space that whole thing back. And then I'll be happy with the way the door fits. And at least it just walks out. And I can readjust that. That's one single adjustment. I believe I can handle it. So what I'm going to try and do is take one of these guys out. There's three of them on there. And if I have to, I can put the smaller one in the front until I get the right size one. But anyway. And the fact that this striker bolt literally walked out of there with very little effort is a testament to this car is not that far gone so thank you for that little car little Camaro car it wants to come back to life it does all right so let's see we get snug See what that do. Oh, that's much better. Yep. Yep. Look at that. It's no longer, it's not dragging anymore. 
So, now I'm happy. So, it's still a 100 pound door. This hasn't been lubricated in about 30 years. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some lube in there just because. Come on now. Slight fingertip pressure. There you go, full close. That door is adjusted, my friends. So we're gonna go and do the same thing to the other side, and that is gonna give us our locked-in reference to, um, to where to put our quarter panels on. One more thing to do on these front hinges. This is an old body guy trick, and a couple of you guys let me know that you know about this trick too. So I've been saving this one to look all smart and stuff. But what we're gonna do right here on these hinges is we're gonna drill a hole right in the center there, all the way through this hinge and into the, uh, the plate in the back. What that's gonna do is gonna give me a quick reference. I'm gonna blow this car apart again to paint it. When I drill my hole in there, that's my pilot hole. That's my realignment hole. And when I put my hinges back on, all I have to do is take a same diameter, i.e. eighth inch dowel, and put it in the hole, align my hinge up to it, and that's gonna get me super close, even with paint, even with everything else. So we're gonna do that right now, and that's gonna be the last step, and that's gonna, it's gonna literally tell us where the, um, where the doors are supposed to go when we put this thing all back together again, um, when we paint it in 2028. I absolutely love these can cut bits. I love them. Amazing. Dos. Alright, we're real close here, but listen, doink. Same things on the other side. You can see it here. It's jamming up against it. It's even folded that back. I mean, that's from the, <laughs> from the door being janky completely, but also, and this is factory. We've got the stack of three super washers on here. You can see where it's coming into contact with it, and it's just, it's not it's not lined up. So I'm gonna change out not only the washer, but I found in and amongst the debris, thank you, Kevin Martin, uh, brand new stainless strikers. So I'm gonna try one of these guys because it's got a thinner washer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull one of those washers out and use this guy in place of it. You're going to see if that makes a huge difference. So I'm going to take the middle washer. Oh, this, look at that. Okay. So the guys on the line had weapons. They had options. They had tools. They had choices. We're going to keep those three smaller ones, get rid of the big one, 
And I'm going to go here to the three smaller ones. And just so it doesn't gall, because that's stainless against carbon steel, we're going to give it a bit of a lube. And help it along. Should probably put some anti-seize on there. If my feeble brain that survived the 80s and all those indulgences remembers and I see is later on bonus for me so anyway we're going to try and put this kind of back where it was ish this car has been painted it's been jammed and I'm talking poorly but if you look here if you look at the two there's a roller that's missing here. Now this guy didn't even have it, it's pure stainless. So we're, you know, that's why, one of the reasons that it was so janky and sloppy, I bet the door being misaligned because the rocker hit just goofed that, that roller up. So now we're gonna see if we have the same interference and, oh man. All right, so not the same we are still okay the rockers lifting I'm sorry the strikers lifted it up when I look at my style line here to here this is kicked down just just a little bit and I'm a little bit tight up here so what I'm gonna do is use that bottom front hinge to pivot off of I'm gonna loosen oh oh that hurts oh last night's tequila in my eyes Ah. <laughs> I'm going to loosen the top hinge and get the jack underneath here and lift it up. Ah. <laughs> we just need a little, little bit of movement. I'm going to go put pressure on it, not too much where it Ruin stuff, but enough to where I can, when I loosen those off, they uh, loosen when the hinge moves. Ha! <laughs> I think that might have been too much. Okay. That's not good. But might have been. That is gonna work, my friends. A little tight. Striker has to come up just a little bit. Does it have to come up or down? Down. This is actually another really good point of alignment. The other side, I didn't have to do much, but this can go in and out, up and down, diagonally. It can be a source of solution. Gap is looking better. Um, slight interference issue there. Hmm. Yeah, something's it's a slight misalignment. It's in a little far. It's in like seven miles too far. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, so obviously I've screwed myself on this one. It's in too far. That's full latched and it's, it's obviously in and it won't come out. So get the helper. And now I adjust the strike again. Outer, a little more. Where's my tool? I'm gonna try. Oh, you dummy. There. That's out. Let's see what that did. No. Absolutely not.
The gap's good. Gap to the rocker is good. So the door's in the right place. I just got to figure out where it's hitting on the striker and make it happy. It's just got to... It's got to do that. See, aren't you glad we're not doing this in fresh paint? It would make me so sad. I think what's happening, I think I took too many washes out. That's what's happening. Okay, so it's hanging up on the latch on the inside of here. We gotta go one more washer. Hmm. So here's my new witness mark. Sharpie's a handy tool. Don't care who you are. So interesting. See right there on the inside edge, it was hanging up on that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So we gotta come out. So I'm gonna take one of these small guys off and go back to the big fat guy and put him back on. And we'll see if that did anything at all. From if, or if I'm full of horse hockey. Cross your fingers. Hold your breath. All right, all right. So there is the, uh, there was the problem. Now I'm gonna do some long needed lubriciousness on there. And strike now needs to move in a little bit, just a bit. The weather seal is actually still on this door, but it's, um, wore out. We are so stinking close. So stinking close. I'm going to adjust it in just a taste more. Look how nicely that opens now. We're going in. We're going in. Down a hair, over a hair. There we go. Gap is perfect here. I don't, this style line is goofy right there. As you can see, follow the finger up here. We've got some body filler there. I have a sneaking suspicion that this door has been mudded up pretty good. We've got a nice even gap. We've got a good gap across the rocker. I'm gonna hold what I got. I can adjust that down. I'm going to do something just really against my own better judgment. Okay. All right. You see, close up of that. Look at that. That's not an illegal amount of filler, but that's the difference. That mowed down a little bit there. That makes my style line back. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the front. I'm happy with this. And... I don't know, I may need to skin that door anyways because this is the accident victim here too. You look at this place here. When I strip this door down, we may be looking at shells or we may be looking at a skin. Either way, here's what I'm looking at. I'm so happy with this. This is the same gap as the other side. When I look at it straight on, I've got a continuous, 
I'm gonna say it's a quarter inch gap all the way up. Necks and tightens a little bit up here. But um, now I have a reference point. And I'm gonna take photos of this side and that side before I cut my quarters off. And that's gonna give me a reference. I'm gonna print them out because I'm old and I print the internet and I'm gonna have a reference where I can look and go A, B, A, B, A, B. And um, yeah. So mission accomplished on that. Now, just like the other side, I'm gonna drill my pilot holes, my realignment holes on each of the hinges on the front. I'm gonna snug those bolts up and Bob is our uncle on this and we're ready to start cutting. Yay, yay. <laughs> All right, so I did one more thing. I had a suspicion and we chipped off enough filler to confirm the suspicion that there was a layer of mud here that was interfering with uh, with his style line. So I ground this flat and look at this. This is the peak of the metal that runs right into this style line here. So this absolutely confirms that this door is in the right place. Now we are ready to basically back half this car. Skin the quarter panels, replace the trunk floor, rear body panel, make it into the round tail light uh, 1970 model, and of course, a roof skin. We're not gonna do any of that. Not right now. We'll get back to it, but you might notice a couple of differences. In the shop, we got the Rocket Miata back here. I've got Derek's truck here, Zed sled with a truck bed, and the other shop is empty and it's waiting for a really cool project. This is neat, man. This is something that um, it materialized over the last couple of months. If you've heard me talk about my past and how I got to love cars, how I became a car guy, my uncle Herb had a salvage yard when we were kids and my cousins, Glenn Wayne and Alan, and my brother, Blaine, we would play in cars when we were little kids and we, our first cars came from there and, and we grew up together and, uh, and it's family and they're car people too. So what's happening is that a truck that used to be my Uncle Herb's, a 56 F100 that now belongs to my cousin Alan, they're trailering it down from British Columbia, Canada, 2,800 miles, and I expect a phone call here any minute. They're probably pulling up to the gate within the next couple of hours. And here's the goal. There's gonna be about six of us because some other cousins and nephews are coming down. We're gonna thrash on this thing for a week and we're gonna film it all for you guys and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this F100 that's partially torn down uh, loaded up with some great AMD sheet metal and within a week with six of us spider monkey on this thing we are going to uh, send it back home fingers crossed body worked reskinned under a new paint job and in the meantime, we're gonna be giving you tons of updates. We're gonna feed you some content. We're gonna give you updates on a, on a probably a daily basis on the shorts. Uh, and I'm so excited about it because it's just one of those things that um, I never ever thought would happen. And it's happening. So uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll get back to the garbage Camaro for sure. We'll get back to Derek's truck for sure because I'm passionate about these projects as well and the 280ZX. But what's coming up? is going to be epic, man. It's going to be really neat. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And while you're, while you're there, uh, check out paintucation.com. If you want to up your skills with any of our training programs, let me know. We're here to help. Or just keep on watching these episodes. As long as you keep watching them, we'll keep making them. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you real soon.